Maybe one. What up, people? <laughs> All Ends Magazine. I'd like to thank everybody for coming in to Plan and Traffic. We do this every Wednesday and Thursday night, depending on when Lou can make it. <laughs> so, uh, Tori, go ahead. Hi, everybody. I'm Tori de Blasi, and I'm from Long Island, New York. If you have any uh, rear differential needs, not to worry. I have all the essentials for your rear differential. And our special guest this evening is the one and only Bogey from All Girls Garage on Velocity, Ooh. now Motor Trend TV. So, Bogey, please introduce yourself and uh, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Bogey, and uh, I'm from All Girls Garage, uh, as Tori mentioned, and I'm also a master mechanic and um, I do a number of things in the automotive arena. I do some shop management consulting, um, do some stuff uh, to bring women into the trades. We did an all-female build a couple of years ago. We're about to do another one, all sorts of stuff. I'm anywhere and everywhere in the automotive industry trying to bring up the industry and bring women into it. And you're doing a fine job. We've been okay. we've been watching. We have been. <laughs> Lou I agree is, with that. Lou is here, but his face didn't show up. Can you hear us, yeah. Lou? Oh, Lou. He, he's here. <laughs> he's lurking. Yeah, yeah. He'll be on in a minute as soon as he figures out his computer. Just but, lurking about. <laughs> so, Bogey, what projects are you working on now? Um, anything good? All sorts of stuff. Um, so, I'm helping a friend of mine. Uh, two of the newbies, actually, from the Chevy Montage build decided that they were so inspired by it, they wanted to start their own project. So I'm helping them build a 56 Chevy pickup truck. And we are also getting ready to launch our next massive all-female build um, that's going to unveil at SEMA in 2020. So that's the that's the big project that's coming up. Nice, nice. Excellent. Yeah. What kind of, uh, do you have any you know, plans for any blueprints, you know, uh, engine transmission, you know, rear differential, any... Uh, Anything set in stone, or is it pretty much uh... nothing is set in stone yet? So um, for the Volvo, for the new all female build, you mean? Yes. Um, yeah. So nothing set in stone on that. It's a it's a 1961 Volvo PV 544. So it's kind of a weird car, um, and the engine compartment is like this big. Okay. So we can't we can't do anything crazy with it. We're we're kind of contemplating. We're pretty sure we want to do a little four cylinder turbocharged deal. Um, a modern engine, maybe an EcoBoost, maybe a Toyota engine. We're not really sure yet. Um, so we shall see once we get the, the car into the shop and can start taking things apart and see what's going to fit. Well, turbo is definitely a good move. Oh, and, yeah. now, and now with a lot of the newer stuff winding up in, the, in the, uh, the junkyards, now you have your pick over, you know, what's there. I mean, if you go, to, you know, from I think EcoBoost is probably a good a good idea for that. Yeah, I mean, they, you can create so much power these days with a four-cylinder and a turbocharger, so um, it, it's pretty impressive what they can do, so it's pretty fun. What am I on the ground? I, you know, that got in my head, too, and I kind of stumbled and lost my train of thought there for a second. I think, right? I that think that's... Is there a small child in the background somewhere? <laughs> I think it's Lou. Is that Lou on helium? Yeah, because he's here. And I see, I see his uh, name on the thing, but it, his face didn't come up. <laughs> it sounds like an old cartoon. Let me turn his mic off. See if that'll work. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah, it's yeah. not my. Now I can concentrate again. I yeah. wish I sound like a bumbling fool there for a second. You know. Oh, Lou said it's not letting him in. All right, I'm gonna re re let you in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Boogie, I mean, you're tra doing a lot of traveling. Um, I seen you were up in Canada last week or two weeks ago. Yeah, I was up there. The truck, sadly, was not. Um, but then the following weekend, I was at, well, just this past weekend, <clears throat> I was at the Classic Auto Show in um, in Orange County, and the truck was there. So that was cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've been, been it's good truck? season. Yeah, yeah, it's coming fast. Yeah. Now I have to say, um, I was at that same show with Bogey up in in yeah. Canada, and she came up missing, and we thought we was gonna have to send out the the mounted police. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't missing; you guys were missing. Y'all forgot to pick me up at the convention center. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to get there next year. I tried for the last two years, and someone's always in the hospital or sick. So, uh, oh, God, will, God willing, next year 
I'll yeah. make it again. I'll make it All up right. there. So yeah, it's a good show. Um good they're, they're nice people up there, man. They they take care of us. Oh yeah, it was an awesome show. Really great turnout. And it's cool because sometimes, you know, you see like you know, you go around all the shows in the U.S. and and obviously there's always new stuff, but you kind of start seeing some of the same vehicles and the same builders. But because there's difficulty transporting sometimes vehicles from Canada to the U.S., we saw a whole lot of stuff there that we mm-hmm. normally wouldn't get to see here in the States. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. And you see a different flavor, too. Yeah. You know, different definitely. styles of how they do stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's what's nice about going. You know, the local car shows, they kind of get played out in your area because you know what to expect. You know what's right. there. As soon as you start traveling on different parts of the country, and you start seeing different cars and different people, different builders. That's what makes it so exciting, you know. And, and the cars are as awesome as they are. It's the people behind the cars that really make the experience come full circle. So, uh, oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. Excuse me, my goodness. So, so I am. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. What shows are you doing this year? Car shows. Um, I'll be at the Classic Auto Show in September in Chicago. Um, What else am I doing? I don't know. I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden. Um, I'll be at Good Guys in Scottsdale. Um, I'll be at SEMA, obviously. Um, I think I have a couple of others, but I can't remember any of them right now. We'll come back to that one. Don't worry. No pressure. (laughs) No pressure. They'll all be on your website, right? What's up? They'll all be on your website. Uh, they should be. They will definitely be on my social media. I'll say that my social media is updated much more frequently than my website. I'm working on a whole website upgrade and rehab. Um, so at the moment, they're not, <laughs> but they should be. Yeah. And they will soon. I promise. <laughs> I apologize. I'm not, I'm not texting, but Lou just uh, sent me a message that his internet's oh, acting up. What's that? Ah, montage. Oh, I thought it was Lou, but no, <laughs> it's my website. You pull my website. Cute. Yeah, it hasn't been updated in a little while, so please don't judge me. No, that's good. Oh, no, it's awesome. You get it. <laughs> but it doesn't have like any of my dates or anything like that, and it's still promoting the Chevy Montage, which is over and done. So yeah. it it needs All some right. updating. That was an All impressive right. build, though. Tell us a little bit about the drivetrain. You know what? You know, uh, you know what your thought process was behind, and what made you choose the uh, components that you did. So I'm I'm a BMW girl. I was trained by BMW. I worked for BMW as a factory technician for gosh seven years, something like that. Um, and so I've always kind of just been the BMW girl, but I've always loved old pickup trucks. And I'm like, all right, how do I get away? with building an old pickup truck, I put a BMW engine in it because it like, you know, merges both worlds. So so that was kind of the original thinking. And then the what kind of evolved out of that was, um, you know, when you do something really goofy like that, it draws attention. And the whole point of the build was really to attract attention to women in the trades and show that we're here and we're interested in that women want in the trades. And so having this crazy BMW M5 engine in that thing meant that every time somebody sees it, they go, huh, what? And then we get to have a conversation with them about about the truck, about the process, about the women who were involved. So um, Dietz on the on the phone is basically, there's that human blue again. <laughs> yep. Oh, my. Mute his mic. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we... We hear you, kinda. Lou, you gotta lay off the helium. He sounds like SpongeBob. <laughs> hey, Lou, go go on your uh, tablet. Go yeah, on your tablet. tablet. That's right. Oh man, he's terrible. I that was like an aggressive helium, Mike Mickey Mouse. I don't know what was happening there. <laughs> Mute that man. Yeah, he's muted. <laughs> 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 Anyway, <laughs> um, so yes, Jim, I agree. I see your comment that uh, that most of y'all are American muscle people. Um, and But, you know, BMW does make some cool stuff, and I, I think it's fun to mix and match. And, you know, one of the whole kind of concepts of this build was 
was the cool thing about being a, a builder and a maker and a doer of things is that you can build and make and do anything. So why limit what you can do, what you can dream up just by, you know, status quo and, and what everybody else does. So we wanted to do something goofy. We wanted to challenge ourselves. We wanted to push ourselves. Um, we wanted to do something that other people hadn't done and, and why not? Right. Um, so we had some fun with it. So strictly it's a S62 BMW engine. We had to make some pretty major modifications to it. Um, it is made it up to the BMW six speed manual transmission. Um, and then it had to have a custom drive shaft so we can made up with the four to nine inch in the back. Nice. Um, and it had to be somewhat custom because on the BMW, the, um, the differential is held it's it's held in place by mounts it's not a floating rear end like it is on an american truck so mm. so that had to be configured so that we didn't have the drive shaft you know shoot through the transmission the first time we hit the brakes um mm. and then the engine it turns out wasn't going to actually fit in that engine compartment like we thought it would so we wound up having to do a dry sump so it's because it, it couldn't sit down low enough um the way the way it works on a on the Chevy engine, the oil sump portion is in, if I'm remembering correctly, is in the is in the back, the back and right. the front, right? <clears throat> so in order for the engine to sit low enough in the engine compartment that the transmission wouldn't be in the cab of the truck, uh, we had to go with a real flat oil pan, and the the flattest we could go was going dry sump. So it's an oil pan that's like this thick, and then it's got hoses and a dry sump pump that runs to a tank all the way in the back rear fender, which is mm -hmm. actually kind of fun because it looks like we have two gas caps. We're like, oh, why do you have two gas caps? Or why is, you know, one over here, one over there. Why are you putting oil where the gas goes? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, one's for gas, one's for oil. So wait, you can't loan your truck out to nobody because they might put gas in the oil spot. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's it's real fun. The first time I posted a picture of putting oil in, and of course we got the comments, we're like, girls, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, dry sump is great though, especially when you you challenge for room and stuff like that. You yeah. know, you just you know, you just take take the lines like you said, you take the pump, you take the, the canister, you put it where it's out of the way and stuff, you can hide it if you want. And it works I'd right. never mess with one. I'd never messed with one before because they're, you know, predominantly for race vehicles or for off-road vehicles, right? They make sense for off-road because when you're at a weird angle, you, you want to make sure you're having constant oil exactly. pressure. And um, it, with a traditional oil pump and a traditional oil pan, you might not. So I'd never really messed with them. I'm not an off-road girl, and I'm I'm not a race girl, so I didn't know right. those things. So it was it was interesting to learn all of that. It was a new challenge, um, but always up for it. It sounds funny though. Like the dry sump, mm -hmm. because there's no oil dampening the sound of the mm -hmm. crankshaft right. rotating in there. Right. It's real loud. So the first time we started that engine up, I was like, "Uh oh, this uh -oh. awful." <laughs> <laughs> well, the Corvettes, <laughs> the Corvettes are all uh, dry sump uh, setups. Yes, yes, they are. But they they do a whole lot of tuning with their exhaust to make it sound good. Still. Yeah, very <laughs> true. <laughs> But then we also had to do some other modifications. We got rid of the dual Vanos, um, which is the variable cam timing on BMWs. So because we had to do a standalone engine control module, there was only so many inputs and outputs that you could do. And to keep things somewhat simple, we had to do a whole um, elimination setup where we put in fixed gears and set static timing on the camshafts, which was, oh my gosh, a huge ordeal. It took like two days to get this thing right. We had to fab up tools to make it happen because, of course, you can't put your little dial indicator, which is magnetic based, on an aluminum head, right? Because it's not right. magnetic. So we had to, you know, create something, and then you've got cam over buckets, and the cam is like you know this big, and the bucket is like this big, so it takes up the whole freaking space. So you've got nowhere to go with the <laughs> dial <laughs> indicator. I know what you mean. It. It was a pain, but we got it. Good. We got it. <laughs> yeah, with a rear differential, you know, you just you know you slap it on there and you're good to go. But yeah, I know oh. you get challenged. So hey, Lou, what's going on? It's Lou. What's happening? And you're not on helium anymore. What's up? So good to see you. Back. I don't know what was going on. It was. I don't know. It was saying it. Oh, it um, was saying that go. all the seats were full. Oh yeah. 
Hold on. Oh, the seats were full. Oh. They wouldn't let me on. So I, I don't know what was going on. Interesting. Well, we're glad to yeah. see you. But I'm I'm a uh, I'm challenged when it comes to these things, you know. That's all right. Still love you. <laughs> but I didn't miss much because I've been listening the whole time. Cool. <laughs> all right. Lose all up right. the feed. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so Lou, I, you... the only thing I did miss was what uh, you put the BMW engine in the truck. What kind of BMW was it? Engine was it? Um, it's an S62. So it's um, out of the M5. The E39 M5, so it's the okay. 2002 to 2005-ish generation of M5s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, little B8. Cool. Those run pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, they're not bad. Is it turboed? It is not turboed or a supercharged. Okay. <laughs> Bogey, what did you do for, uh, for, uh, for fabricating uh, mounts? Fabricating mounts? Fabricating mounts? Yeah, motor yeah, motor yeah, motor We've got some We've horrible got some echo echo gun. Blue. Blue. It might be me. Damn it. <laughs> Put your headphones Put your on. Headphones on. Hi, Lou. Right, hold on. Is that better? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not yeah I'm not no. 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 Do you have it on do you have it on your phone and your computer? No, I don't. I just have it on on the tablet. Um how's that? Interesting. Oh, wait, I think it's good. No more echo. Yep, you're good. Is that All better? Right, good job. <laughs> yeah. All right, what that was the good? question? I'm sorry. What do you do to uh, with uh, motor mounts and transmission yeah, mounts? It would probably be all you know, custom-made for the uh, BMW engine in the, uh, yeah. in the 57. Yeah, they, uh, we didn't have a lot of room to work with. Um, and, and in all honesty, the mounts that we wound up fabricating for it, um, I'm going to wind up re-engineering at some point one of these days when i have time um because originally you know you live and you learn um we we thought that we were gonna have to do a custom exhaust manifold or custom headers and so we built the the engine mounts thinking that we had all the room in the world and we were just going to build a manifold around it well then we find out that the header the original manifold would work but not with the mounts that we made. So then we had to modify them again and it's all a hot mess and it's super crammed in there. And then because of where it is and where the cylinder head sits and where the um, motor mount sits and where the exhaust sits, when we went to put the steering in, there was no room for a steering column. Gotcha. So that was fun. <laughs> so then we had to modify even more. And like all of it was a hot mess because um, the, the dry sump components that we'd ordered for the engine they, we were supposed to get them in 30 days we ordered it you know how that stuff goes we got it wound up getting them 150 days after we ordered it oh so wow we couldn't wait to get them to fully be able to mock up the engine and the engine mounts and all the rest of the drivetrain and all the rest of the components before we went to paint so we wound up having to go to paint get the whole thing assembled we were fabbing up motor mounts and figuring out the steering column crap like a month before SEMA. And oh my gosh, was it stressful. Yeah. So but time is of the essence exactly. and you don't have enough of it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So no you know, pressure. Right. Exactly. And I, you know, my first like big build of this magnitude and I'm in a booth with chip foos, like no big deal. No pressure. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, it but it was cool. Yeah. It all it all worked out. It's going to require some reengineering, but you know, sometimes you're you're captive by your parts suppliers, and yep. it, we couldn't wait, right? So there was no choice but to do the whole thing ass backwards. Yeah, but. bass backwards. Yes, I, I've done that also. I know. Yeah, that's what happens sometimes. Well, that happens yep. to me all the time, and then I come back around to the right way. <laughs> Right. Well, that's how, I mean, at the end of the day, like that's how we learn the right way. And I, you know, I think it's interesting. I've been, I've been having this conversation with a lot of builders in the industry recently. It, we tend to not talk about our mistakes and our f ups and our learning experiences. Right. And and I think we do a disservice to the community and definitely to young builders coming up by not sharing. Like, hey, we're human. We mess up. We learn by our mistakes, just like everybody else. Like. I had this one newbie on the build who was like, how did you get so good at fixing mistakes? And I'm like, I've made them all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the only way you That's get good thing. at it. 
right? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's the only way you get I, good at. What's that? I said that's the only way you get good at fixing them. You make them. It really is. Like, really? Get excited about your mistakes. Like, yeah. all right, sweet, I messed up. Now I get to learn something new. Like, get excited yeah. about stuff. But I think we tend to look at social media and we look at people on the web and we're like, oh, they're all perfect, and I'm the only one who messes up. So I'm on this new kick to like get everybody to share their stories and share their mess ups and their failings. Oh, I think that's how we bring the next. <laughs> You know, which yeah. which one do you want? <laughs> <laughs> we got two two a day. <laughs> two, a day. <laughs> two a day is a great day. That, that's the day I log in. This you're talking about. <laughs> They're cheaper by the dozen. So <laughs> I was at a, I was at a car show in Chicago last year, and uh, and this young guy came by with a couple of his friends and he was staring at the truck. He just stared at it for a while and then he went away. And he came back, stared at it for a little while and then went away. Third time he comes back and staring at it, I find him like, I'm going to talk to this dude and find out what's up. Like, is he judging it? Does he hate it? Like, what's happening here? So I walk up next to him. I cross my arms next to him. I stare at the truck with him for a little bit. And I'm like, so, what do you think? <laughs> and he's like, trucks like this make me want to quit building cars. Wow. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? And he was like 22, 23 years old. And he's like, it's so perfect. I will never be that good. I should just give up now. And I'm like, hold up a oh, second. Right. I'm like, let me take you on a little tour of the truck. And I walked him around and I showed him all of our F up. And he's like, mm. why are you doing this? Nobody shares their mistakes. I'm like, because you need to know that we all make them. <laughs> like, yeah. keep going. We all make them. Yeah. We put food makes them. Ring Brothers makes them. We all make them. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's my little soapbox. I'll get off that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's, back, let's back up for one second, though, just to show everyone, you know, uh, out in Facebook land how extensive the build was. You led 90 women of all different degrees of experience levels on yeah. this build. Yeah. How do you <laughs> that straight? Um, so fortunately, it was never 90 women all at the same time. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it was 90 women from 23 different states, and 30% of them had never worked on cars before. Wow. Uh, at any given time, it was about five or six people there. So we would have a mix of pros and newbies and um, enthusiasts and DIYers kind of all there at the same time. So it was a lot of like exchanging of skill set. Our welders were teaching our painters how to weld. Our painters were teaching our welders how to paint. Um, the newbies were just soaking up everything they could soak up. Everybody was hands on. The biggest challenge was holding a vision of what this was going to look like at the end while still being collaborative about it. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes I honestly look at it. I'm like, how did it turn out so good? Because it really kind of shouldn't, given this, <laughs> this setup of how we were working. Um, and no one person did a complete job, right? So people would come in, and they would start body work on a fender, and then they'd leave. And then somebody else would come in and look at this, the little piece of tape on it that said sanded to 220 grit, and they pick up where that person left off. And you know how it is. Like, every – you ask 20 technicians the same question, and they'll give you 20 different answers – Every new group of women would come in and be like, why'd they do it that way? Why didn't they do this? <laughs> why didn't they do this? So there was a lot of challenges, for sure. Now, how, how long did it take take for the whole project? It, it was 10 months from start to finish. Wow. That's, that's, that's impressive. Pretty good. That's impressive. Now, now let me ask you this. With This is an incredible, to me, it's incredible how you got it all set up to have different women come in at different times. And how was that part of it, like getting organized? You know, it was a little by the seat of our pants, to be honest. I had um, a couple, one particularly really good friend who kind of signed on to help me out for the whole project. And she really helped coordinate people's flights and lodging. We had bunk beds in the warehouse. So people were coming and staying in the warehouse where, where we were building the truck. Um, and it was just, you know, let's go, let's make it happen. The, the deadline of SEMA kind of came after we conceived the project. So I thought it was going to take a nice long time. It was going to be a little bit more lackadaisical. <laughs> and and then BASF was like, so we want to we wanna show it at SEMA. I'm like, ooh, okay, we got we to gotta move fast. And <laughs> our building didn't even have an air compressor in it yet. So 
we didn't really have the time to set up a lot of infrastructure and it was pure passion and determination and working our butts off around the clock and um, just go, go, go to make it happen. But people, basically, if you raised your hand and said you wanted to come play, you were invited to come and play. So how did you put the word out to everybody? Social media is a magical thing. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, we, we just put the word out and, and other people spread it for us. And yeah, it kind of took took on a life of its own, to be honest. Yeah. And I, I think really the big piece of it, and a lot of times, I, I think no offense to you guys, and I, there's been a ton of men in the industry who've been huge allies and mentors to me, and I have nothing against men whatsoever, but I think men don't necessarily understand um, unless you've been in a, in a minority situation, like the impact and the meaning of what this was. Cause a lot of times I'll have guys say to me like, so these guys were volunteering to do this and then you got to keep the truck. That's kind of BS. Right. Or, um, you know, why would they do that for free? Like, why would they want to do this? Why would people fly from Alaska to come and participate on this bill? Um, but the power of this whole project, like it wasn't even the truck. The power of the project was the experience because these women, so many of us, less than 2.5% of all automotive trades people are women, right? So right. we don't often get to work with or meet or you know ever interact with, engage with other women like us. So, so many of the ladies mm. that came out of the world, they were like, yes, I am not missing this opportunity. I, there's like to meet other people like me and the minute they walked through the doors, they, like it was sisterhood for everybody, like sharing our life stories, connecting, feeling empowered. And um, people created friendships that lasted, that are still going on. They're supporting each other across the, the continent via social media. A lot of hugs. I mean, a lot of hugs, a <laughs> lot of tears, lots of sharing, lots of caring, um, mm -hmm. care bear stare. There's all that good stuff. People care like, bear stare. I like that. <laughs> That's good. Like that. <laughs> Like so many of these girls went home and did big stuff, right? Like they went home and quit their jobs and started businesses or took their businesses to a new level or, you know, started their next chapter because they were so inspired by meeting other women. And it's, it's kind of hard to explain that magic, mm -hmm. but it was, it was pretty freaking magical. You know, it just plays right in your wheelhouse though, too, because you're big on education. So I'm sure the people who signed up for the montage build, you took this as a teaching experience and they had as a learning experience. So they walked away with a lot. So ex explain, you know, you know, how you approached all this, you know, with the different women with different, you know, skill sets and levels. How do you approach that? It's got to be a <laughs> challenge. You know, I think so much of it is, is just figuring out where people are at and um, you know, the professionals came in and, and in reality, I'm, I'm a mechanic. I've not really ever been a builder. I don't, I'm not an expert at paint. I'm not an expert at body work or welding or fabrication. I'm learning it. I can do it, but I'm not amazing at it. So I really had to trust the pros that were coming in and trust their experience and knowledge and have them kind of take over teaching in that arena. Mm -hmm. I also had to learn quickly enough that I could share. So when we had a pro come in, they would teach me and then I could turn around and teach the newbies when they left. Um, yeah. But you know, especially the real, real green folks that would come in, because we had folks who came in who didn't know what a ratchet was. Um, we had this adorable pharmacist. She's pharmacist, pharmacist by trade, competitive swing dancer, the cutest thing ever. But she called the ratchet a clicky, clicky tool. <laughs> a clicky, <laughs> clicky tool. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that was the name for the rest of the build, huh? That was the name. And then, so, you know, clutch head bolts? Yeah. So, like, like bow tie looking thing she called it the batman bolts so that forever became the batman tool and the batman bolt <laughs> um, so, which it kind of does Ooh, batman signal I don't, I don't know anyway um so it was really working with people and finding their strength turns out she's super damn good at doing safety wire she's super good at doing seam sealer she got really yeah. good at grinding she became my go-to grinding girl when we had welds to grind off and and make smooth so you know you find people's strengths mm -hmm. It's yeah, awesome. exactly. So what what started awesome. your in your mind? Like you just came up and said, you know what? I'm gonna have a thousand girls come over and play. <laughs> I mean, kind what of started? Florida, I know it's kind of two part. I've I've always been really passionate ab about the automotive industry and about bringing women into the industry. Um, 
it's always been a passion of mine. It's been something that I've been doing in various different ways throughout my career. Um, part of it also was I, I had started a shop when I was 28 years old. Um, and over the years, kind of like what often happens when you start a business is eventually you stop doing the thing that you got into business to do. So I replaced myself as a technician. I had technicians doing the work for me. I replaced myself as a service advisor. I had a service advisor selling the work. I had, you know, I suddenly became the boss sitting in the office behind a computer all day and looking at numbers and dealing with legal and accounting and marketing and all of the rest of the stuff. And I was really missing working with my hands. So the project was kind of twofold. It was like, I need to get my hands dirty again. I need to work on something. I'm missing building things. I want to learn a new skill set. I want to be challenged. Learning and taking on body work and fabrication on a bigger level was, was just that challenge that I wanted. And then how can I make this something that isn't just about me? How can I make this into something that, that is a, a positive for the industry and a positive for women, women in the industry? And so it just kind of grew. And you know, sometimes you tell ideas to friends and they like make the idea bigger and bigger. And that's kind of what happened. And then you finally find somebody who's willing to put your butt on the line and commit you to a time frame. And that's when the crazy ideas actually come to fruition. And that's really, really what happened. Nice. Let me ask you a question. Um, you went to college for something other than automotive. I did. <laughs> Would you mind sharing that with us? And what made you make the jump from your major to being in the automotive industry? Yeah. Um, so I majored in uh, pre-law and women's studies with a minor in politics. And I wanted to go into constitutional law. Um, I wanted to work on women's issues from a legal perspective. But... I had done auto shop in high school. That's when I got my first taste of it. I'd gotten a Volkswagen Bug when I was 16 years old and a piece of crap, broke all the time. And I started wanting to learn about how to fix it myself. So I enrolled in high school auto shop, got a bunch of pushback. Like people telling me, you don't belong here. You shouldn't be here. Why would you want to take auto shop? You're going to college. Why would you want to do this? And the more pushback I got, either because I was a girl or because I was smart and going to college, I thought was horribly insulting, by the way. Like, horribly insulting countries as a whole. Like, this um, the more pushback I got, the more I wanted to do it. So I, I wound up rebuilding my bug in my high school auto shop, took two years, did a complete restoration. And then I went off to college and did the college thing because that's what I was supposed to do, right? And I don't regret it. It was a great experience. But at the end of my college career, I found myself in the same position that I found myself more recently running the business. I, I was tired of being all up here and I was missing. Yeah. This, I don't know. Right? So, uh, so in my life, I'm looking to constantly have that balance. I, I am a thinker and I like doing entrepreneurial things and projects and, and, and all of that. Like I need some of this. I need the mental stimulation. I need the challenges, but I also need, yeah. I need to put my hands and build stuff and make stuff. Well, it's all about balance. Right? Yeah. That's the key. It really so, is. Here's my pendulum swung from side to side, right? Academia right. and college to being a mechanic full time to being a shop owner where I was balanced for a little while. And then it became more. <laughs> <laughs> then it went back to the montage. So trying to find that balance, you know. Who had the biggest impact on your career? Ooh, and you don't have it. to say me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you until just a few short years ago in my career, but um. But wait, Lou is <laughs> Lou is the OG. <laughs> I know, right? We did audition together for a show. Remember that, Lou? Yep, we did the. Uh, it was uh, the first. Yep. Yeah, 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 the show with the Jeep. That the was Jeep. a good show. Yeah. We did that before Car Fix and All Girls Garage started. They had a concept of of a guy and a girl being on a show together, and you and I auditioned yeah. for that. It was my yes, first time meeting. Yep, I remember that too. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, who's my biggest influencer? God, there's been so many. Um, some in the positive, and some in the negative. Right. I think often the people who are the most, how do I say this, um, the most negative or the, the biggest detractors from what you're doing 
are often the people who push you the hardest. Like mm-hmm. um, my my first shop foreman at a BMW dealership was not very friendly, um, and he pushed me incredibly hard. And and I think in a, in a way because he was trying to break me. And my dispatcher at that dealership was the same. I mean, he he would pound his fist on the table and like get red in the face and spit while he was talking, saying that girls don't belong in the shop and um, girls shouldn't be mechanics. And he didn't know why I wanted to be a man. Like, I don't want to be a man. I just want to be a mechanic. Um, <laughs> so those were the same thing. Um, but I think the more they pushed me, like my shop foreman wound up being one of my, my biggest influences and mentors. He taught me so much by not teaching me anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, right? Like I would make a mistake or I would have a struggle and he's like, I don't know, you figure it out. You went to BMW school. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. I'll figure it no out. No class. Yeah. Right. But it made me a better mechanic. So yeah. I thank him for it. At the end of the day, I thank him. So Yeah. Yeah, for sure. If you added like one highlight and I have something in mind, so let's see if we yeah. can go to the same place. Um, what was the highlight of this journey so far? Of my whole career? Yes. At okay. this point. I mean, to this point, the Chevy Montage is totally the biggest highlight. But prior to that, starting my business. I mean, you know, hopefully, if if you're not growing, you're dying is what they say, right? So um, right. so it's always whatever's whatever is next, whatever is whatever's right ahead of me. You know? What you you got an incredible award back in 2011. You were on the 40 under 40 list. Oh yeah. So tell us about that. And when you heard the news, how'd you react? You know, what were you feeling? Did you feel like you know vindicate? Like wow, look, I, I picked the right path. I, I mean, it had to feel absolutely amazing inside. It did. I you know, honestly, my first reaction was probably I'm so glad I got my application in before I turned 40. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I, gosh, maybe maybe it sounds a little. I don't know. I it. I guess it was vindication. It, that was not the biggest award for me. Um, that was not the mo- most monumental. I think. Um, That was a big one for me because it felt like I was being vindicated in or validated in the business community. And that's what I should have used. Yeah. And that an automotive shop was being valued in the traditionally, because generally 40 under 40 tends to be more white collar. So to see a trade related business we recognize there, that was, that was really cool. Um, But being, being, um, received by the industry, I think has also been a more powerful thing for me because I struggled so much in the industry to gain acceptance and to to make a space for myself that when when the industry, when I get awards within the industry, when I won like Wix filters, I won technician of the year. And like, that was a big deal. Um, and just that sort of stuff is much more, I guess, had, had much more meaning to me because it was such a hard hard fought win. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At that point, all your hard work was, you know, was realized it, it paid off. And that, that, that's what I was really impressed about when I, when I read that. So uh, congratulations. You have a lot to be proud of. Thank you. I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing a question here. Yeah. You see it. What, the one from Cameron. Yeah. Cooper? What if any, yeah. What if any are the roadblocks for women that still exist for women in the automotive industry? So there's a ton still. Um, I would love to say that things have changed a lot since I came up in the industry. I, I think one of the differences since I came up is that social media exists. So um, women who are in the industry can see one another and be supported and empowered by that and motivated by that. And I think there are a lot of folks whose perception is changing. However, there's still a ton of old school guys out there who own and run shops. And um, it's it, just a couple of months ago, a friend of mine very, very talented woman. She's the woman who actually painted the Chevy Montage. Um, very talented. She painted a vehicle that was up for the grade eight award. Like she, you know, Riddler award. She's a phenomenal, phenomenal painter. And she was moving and looking for a job and she had not one, not two, but three shop owners tell her, I will never put a girl in the back. Wow. No woman will wow. in my shop because it'll be a distraction for my guys because 
it, I'll wind up with a lawsuit because she won't be able to handle stuff because like all of the things. Hmm. So I think that still definitely yeah. exists. Um, I still, to this day, I've, I've been on TV for eight years. I've been a technician for 20 years. I've been a shop owner for 12 years. I'm a shop management coach. Like I've paid my dues in this industry. And to this day, if I got a dollar for every time somebody came up to me at a car show or in public or wherever and just grabbed my hands, not even asking, just grabbed my hands and looked at them and go, do you really work on cars? <laughs> yeah. I would be a, That's a little pushy. <laughs> I'd be a wealthy one. Just a dollar every time that happens. <laughs> you need to smack him with that hand. Well, well, right? well Bogey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my son's service in the, in the ring. He uh, will be happy to be a security detail, and he'll do it for little. Just pay his travel expenses, and he'll keep everybody away. Well, listen, <laughs> it used to bother me, but I'll be honest, um, and, and it still does bother me a little bit. But at this at this point, I really kind of take it as an opportunity because when that happens, I, I could be rude back, and I could be defensive and upset, but that doesn't do anything. Um, and really, it's an opportunity for me to have a conversation and enlighten and educate somebody, and 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 say, yeah, you know, let me ask you a question. Would you ever do that to a male mechanic? Right. Right. Would you ever ask that question of men who are on automotive TV shows? Do you guys really do all the work or is there some guy behind the scenes doing it for you? Like you wouldn't ask that of a guy. Right. That's right. Fair. Yep. So it's, it's an opportunity. I, I think there are still lots of roadblocks. I think the biggest roadblock at this point in time actually affects both women and men. Because we're not we're not exposing our kids in general to the trades, both both men and women. Mm -hmm. So I agree with that. It, yeah, it used to be that we just weren't exposing women. Um, now we're not exposing either. And how do you know if you if you like something if nobody ever lets you try it? Yeah. So that's really yeah. what's behind the montage, right? Is like mm -hmm. let's let people try it. Yep. Yeah. Well, Lou, when we were in Cortland. You addressed all the uh, the people. From Bosies. Oh, yeah. And you shared your experience. And my son Joe was there. And Joe didn't know which way he was going. And Lou got through to Joe. Joe's actually in the welding program, Bosies, right now. Yeah. So if it wasn't for that trip, if it wasn't for Lou yeah. and that, you know, that guidance pushing him in the right direction. Yeah. Joe would still be wondering, you know, what next? And he could take weld the kid. Totally. I am so proud. He I've can seen weld pictures the kid. of it. He's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Even me being in the trades, I didn't get exposed to welding and metal fab until I was in my mid 30s. And man, like if I had been exposed to that when I was younger, I'm, I might have gone the fabrication route and, and paint and body route rather than the mechanical route because I mm. love it. It's so much fun. Uh, it's never yeah, too late. You have a great skill set. So it's never too late. I never got into I never got into sheet metal work because I didn't have the tools to do it. You know what I mean? Right. So I just gotten I got into the heavier stuff because that's what I was doing. So that's that's why I turned up in that. And now I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna start working on sheet metal stuff just so I can mess with it. Just have a clue how yeah. to do it. You know? And that's, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's how we learn, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. how we learn. We were doing stuff without any. We didn't have any equipment at the shop when we were doing the montage for metal working. Right. We didn't have a shear. We didn't have a break. We didn't have any of that stuff. So, like, literally, we're using a cutoff tool, a pneumatic mm -hmm. cutoff tool to Been cut there. metal, right? Like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. You don't have the tools. You figure it out. You learn. And then when you get the right tools, you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plasma cutter, yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, really. Where have you been in your life? <laughs> exactly. You're wondering, how come you didn't have this long? How come you didn't get it the other day? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> definitely makes a difference. <laughs> really. <Yes. laughs> you appreciate yeah. it. That's for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Did yeah, you see Brian said that he he'd been selling. He, he's only sold tools to four women, and he's been selling tools for eighteen years. Man. Yep. yep. There was. I remember there was a there was in my uh when I went to Bosey's, there was one girl in diesel mechanics class. Yeah, I remember there was one. Yeah. Was, there was. When I went to school, I went to Universal Technical Institute. There were like three thousand guys and seven girls. Ooh. Yeah. And then in the, when I was in the Navy, there was Martinez, Lana, uh, it was Shaw. There was five women when I was in the Navy that were that that actually turned that were in the same shop. 
at different times, yeah. but there was five. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's more now, I'm sure, but there sure. was five. Yeah. Yeah. The numbers, are, the numbers are going up for sure. It's still, oh, yeah. still a challenge, but we're getting there. I think tides are changing. Um, and, and the old stubborn guys who refuse to hire women, they're retiring. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, one, you gonna... one thing real quick before I uh, check out, because uh, I know uh, Terry wants to, uh, to ask some questions as well. But yeah. you know, I, I met Lou about two years ago at a show mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. And my wife always wanted to know, you know, who the person was I was talking to on the phone. And, you know, to this day, I still watch Car Fix and I still watch Old Girls Garage. So, you know, Lisa and me will sit down on Saturday between 11 and 12. We'll watch Lou's show. And Lisa actually stuck around for your show. And Lisa knows absolutely nothing about cars. Yet she's been really impressing me with some of the words and the phrases. And I'm like, oh, my mm -hmm. God. Between you <laughs> and you, the Tui is she's learning. And, you know, it's, uh, it's really, so she said, she's, my wife said to me that she said, I don't like a lot of people, but I love Bogey. So Aww. you got a big fan of the Blasi household. So uh, hey. you know, thank you for all that you do. I'm going to, you know, uh, run this way. Uh, Terry gets a couple. And uh, we'll talk really soon. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you for being on the show. My pleasure. Lou, I'll catch you later. Lou, I'll catch right. you later too. Okay? Thanks. Appreciate it, Tori. Anytime. See you later. All right. You we'll new joining us now? Uh huh? We got a new face joining us now. Yeah, I, think, I, I guess Terry's coming. I guess. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, he's our he's our LS specialist. <laughs> okay. So, and I see someone say, "Had guys quit because you've hired ladies?" That's yeah. fascinating. And Nelson Nelson does. Uh, he builds converters. He builds converters. Yeah, he he's got a, he's down in Alabama building all kinds of crazy converters. You know, OEM I, stuff all the way up to to performance stuff. So. But he's I got mean, women working for him now. I think he's got, I think, he, I mean, he said he had a few working for him now. But yeah, you get people I like that, though. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Hi. Hey, up, Bobby, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? Doing good. What's up, Lou? What's up, Lewis? How you guys doing? What up? What up? Hey, did you meet Bogey out of, uh, out of the No, zone? I saw her. She was busy. She was running all oh. over the place. I was like, I got to okay. let Bogey be. <laughs> <laughs> She's running all over the place, and it is a pleasure to meet you, Bogey. Pleasure to meet you as well. Seema is always nuts for me. Oh no, we're gonna definitely hook up. We can definitely hook up and see each other in, on, in Seema this coming this coming uh, right. uh, October yeah. for sure. Say the next one. Yeah. You know what but I mean. That... <laughs> what did you say? I said just say the next one. That's all you gotta say. Because I was saying the remember next... October is because at the end. So you're right. All right, Lou, you got that one. Yeah. You know. We, I have a loose story that I'll tell you, but it's something that I got to take offline. <laughs> First of all, I want to tell you, you're an inspiration to not just ladies, but to everyone. Because you know what it is? I have a, I have a niece and uh, she, she, it's not the card game, but she does watch your show. She doesn't want to get in the card game, but she does right. talk about you. She says bogey. And she talked about several other women, but I know the name, your name, so I know she's talking who she's talking about. So I want to say thank you for being an inspiration to my little niece, along with other women and men, because you are definitely an inspiration. And a few seconds ago, you said that you're not a fabricator and all that, but yet you are. You know, I'm, I'm now I'm learning. Yeah, I'm learning. Yeah, I see some of your work, and you're I all that in the back of your. I appreciate that very much. And you know, at the end of the day, I'm not necessarily trying to encourage everybody to go into automotive. Um, I, I want everybody to do what sets their, their heart on fire and their soul on fire. Like what makes you happy, you know, whether, whether it's building a truck or building a house or building a career in accounting, I don't care, whatever it is that makes you happy, like mm. whatever you dream up, you can build it, you can do it. And that's, that's at the end of the day, my message, like if I can bring more people into automotive, cool, mm -hmm. but and I really just want people who love their lives. And, and the cool thing is, like you said, you're not telling everyone to go into all, you're not telling anyone to do that, but you're telling pretty much to follow your dream. And, and, and that message definitely comes out when you speak. And like you, I went to college and the whole nine and somehow, you know, like, but uh, I was supposed to be a weatherman, believe it or not. That's yeah. funny. Can, why, That's is a switch. Why, why is it funny? <laughs> That's funny. No, just because they're dramatically different than what you're doing. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what I can say. You know, tonight we got a Northwestern oh, one coming in from the East Front. You know, come on, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you the man. Hey, Buggy, uh, T- Terry is um, a YouTube sensation. He's like the man on YouTube. Cover man 66. No, no, no space. No space. Just straight up. <laughs> <laughs> no space. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question, Buggy, because um, I, you know, uh, Lou, I'm not going to ask the question, so don't worry. I'm, I'm just... I'm drawing a spindle that I'm going to build. I'm drawing a What's spindle that I'm going to build while you were talking. Well, you know what? Now I'm going to ask the question. Bogey, ask the question. I'm going to ask the questions. I got to ask this question. I asked everyone, so I got to find out because I, I'm batting zero, to tell you the truth. <laughs> out of all the tri fives, like the 55, 56, and 57 Belt Air, right? Mm-hmm. Which would be your favorite? Really? That's your question. That, that's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that's everybody. Of all the things that you could ask me, that's your question. That, that's the <laughs> <Yes. laughs> look, um, look at all the comments. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so I'm going to answer this in a weird sort of way. Well, I'm going to answer it and then I'm going to explain my answer. So my answer is I don't care. <laughs> I, have no, I, have no, I have no preference. My reasoning is um, I'm not a typical car girl in the sense that I can tell you what year they made this change and what engine came and what and the horsepower and the cam lobes and the blah, 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 blah. Like, is, it broken? <laughs> is it broken and can I fix it? So my is the broken one. We're just going to, uh, you know what? You know what? We're just going to say 56 and end it. How's that? Okay, that works. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you got one. I got one. <laughs> if the 56 is broken, then yeah, totally. Right, there you go. You know, we're just going to talk about the 56. But let me okay. ask you this, though. Let me ask you this, though. Um, you are an inspiration. You really are. And it's funny because uh, uh, I guess it happened a couple of weeks ago because, like Lewis says, I do YouTube videos. And most of my videos are towards LS or towards the LS install and some restoration because I have experience with, with body work and everything like that. But it's mostly towards LS install. And make a long story short, I was at a gas station and a woman, you know, needed help because you had mentioned how some men would, you know, as far as like, I'm never going to put a woman in body shop. So there was a woman that needed help putting air in her tire and I was waiting behind her and I was just looking at it, you know, like not really paying too much attention to the point where she went in. I thought she was coming in to maybe ask a question, but then a guy comes out, shows how to put air in a tire and it looked like he was just downrating the poor woman to the point where I almost stepped out because it was like, you could see that she wasn't comfortable. He was saying things to her. And at that point I said, okay, fine. Should I thrash this guy? But that's not my style, but it was just very nasty. And I thought to myself, the best way, like how you said, the best way is to empower. So what I, I, I plan to do is some of my videos, what I'm going to do is do like putting air in tires because most people don't have a, a, a person that can show them this stuff. Yeah. You know, simplistic stuff. How could you check the rate? Open your door. You got the, you got all the information there. How to top off. Yeah. Very, I wouldn't say basic, but to the person who don't know. It is like why aren't we teaching this in in driver's ed? Like this should be part of driver's education. And I teach um, basic women's car care classes at my shop and um, and have done them in, at other people's shops all around the country. And um, and it is it's amazing just the basic information that people need and how empowering that can be for them right. to feel vulnerable. Like I the very first women's car care class I taught was to some friends of mine back in New Jersey. And the this woman, one of the women who took the class, very high powered New York attorney. She's always dressed to the nines, very, very successful. So she took my class. And about a month later, she calls me up and she's so excited. She's like, Bogey, I got a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I taught them how to change a tire, right? And I'm like, that's mm-hmm. awesome. What did you do? And she goes, Oh, I was wearing heels, so I called AAA. <laughs> and so we have to laugh, but then what she said after that was the important part. She said, very seriously, <laughs> but I watched him and he did it right. And I thought that was a really like powerful statement that you know, she may never change a tire herself in her life. She may right. choose not to do that. But at the end of the day, she knows she can if she needs to. 
And in that situation, she's not feeling vulnerable and like there's a big target on her head. She knows she's in a, in a position of empowerment and control. Right. And right. So that's, the, I mean, that the basic knowledge is so, so key and teaching that stuff to everyone you can. I yeah. encourage that. And, 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 it's, and it's sad because like you said, to me, it should be like something that they should teach in school. It is not, not a shop class, but I mean, like, I think everyone should have to take some talk, some type, especially like, you should know how to check your air. You should know how to change a tire. You mm -hmm. should know how to check your oil, how to top off your coolant, how to not have a radiator cap explode in your face and burnt, get burnt by coolant. Like that yeah. stuff, every single person driving a car should know. Should know Period. that. Yeah. Yeah. Very basic stuff and everything. And uh, so I'm definitely going to dedicate a couple of videos every now and then to the, I, I'm not going to hey. say, because like, I want to be politically correct. So whoever wants to see it, yeah, you know, totally. You know, whoever needs to see it, if you, because like you said, I mean, I was fortunate enough. I had an uncle who was in cars and at like maybe seven years old, I was out there helping him yank a transmission out, yanking an engine out. Yeah. We did it old school. We did it down South with a tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? you do it. Do what you can, man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, by the time I was 12 years old, you know, like, <laughs> I was doing some serious work, which was, it was beautiful. And yeah. I thank him for that. So yeah, I, I gotta, you know, after seeing that, I don't want, I, I don't want anyone to have to feel like how that went that Imagine how that woman must have felt getting back in her car. So I'm just, yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, you guys, yeah. your own I, awesome. I applaud you for doing that. No, yeah. So um, Ed Mackle has question. a question. Do you think that yeah. the mechanics, Mechanic slash technician trade should have recognized skill levels like electrician's apprentice and journeyman and et cetera. I do. Um, I'm a big supporter of, of national licensing. I know a lot of technicians are not big fans of that. And it's kind of a controversial subject. Uh, I really appreciate what they have in Canada um, with their national licensing and their apprenticeship program. And you, gotta, you kind of go through the page. In the States, my mom, who knows nothing about cars, could hang a shingle outside her house and call herself a mechanic and there'd be nothing legally stopping her. Yeah. And that's a scary thought. And I think particularly, especially my mom working on cars, that's a particularly scary thought. Um, but, <laughs> um, you know, we're getting into the day of autonomous cars and all of this automation. And the fact that anybody can, can work on these cars without... A, an actual license to do it like we require a license to drive a car we require a license to drive a school bus we require a special mm -hmm. license for all of them. my nail person needs more licensing <laughs> than a tech yep. does right and yet we're gonna have anybody who decides to call themselves a mechanic and can afford the tools working on cars that can drive themselves so what if they don't know how to align the sensor properly what if they need to calculate and now this car that's self-driving kills people yeah, we, yeah. I think we're going to be dealing with national licensing sooner rather than later. I think it's coming, and I'm I'm a big supporter of it. I think it would legitimize the trade. I think people would have more respect for us. I think we could charge what we deserve to charge and pay our oh, technicians yeah. what we pay them if we had a license. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, I agree. I agree with that because when I first got into it, you, you had kind of like an apprenticeship thing. You know, when you went to the dealership. They put you with a guy and you helped him out. And he was kind of, that's, that's how it worked. And then once, once you were competent enough, you just moved on. But I mean, right. it was nothing, nothing official, you know? Yeah. Lots of places that do that. Yeah. And a lot of shops are starting to do that. We do, we do that at my shop. Um, but it's, it's not like a lot of shops don't do it. And a lot of shops won't hire new people. Yeah. And I think that's the challenge we have too, with, um, with getting people into the industry. How do you get, experience if nobody will give you uh -huh. yeah. get experience. Well, and, you know and it doesn't help that some of these schools they, they really don't teach anything i mean i've seen so many kids come out of these schools and they don't they still don't know nothing you uh, know what i mean because I, th there's something going on there. like i agree and disagree with you because what do they what do they call the the guy or gal that graduates bottom of their class in medical school uh, they, they still come to the doctor right yeah. You may have graduated from the yeah. class with the worst grades possible, but they still call you doctor, right? Yeah. So there are kids who get out of technical school and they don't know which end of the wrench to hold. And there are people who graduate from technical school knowing a lot. So I don't necessarily want to judge technical school. 
I'm as just a saying whole, schools in general. I've run into a bunch. But I, I, I'm I not saying any specific school. I'm just saying because there's a lot yeah. of schools out there teaching. There's a totally. lot. Totally. And you'll have good kids and 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 not so good kids. And some people just don't have it in them. Um, I think one of the challenges is that because we don't have an apprenticeship program, like when you look at medical school, you get out of medical school and then you have to do a residency. And then you start out doing general practice. Like you wouldn't have somebody who just graduated medical school doing brain surgery on you. Yeah. Right. Like why do we expect kids coming out of technical school without an apprenticeship, without their residency to suddenly mm -hmm. know all the things like they know the book smarts and that's it. Like they still need somebody to take them under their wing and show them all of the things and get the hands on experience and learn from making mistakes and, and all of the rest of it. I think we have unrealistic expectations yeah. of kids coming out of trade school. Yeah. Well, and, and see, that's where, that's where the apprenticeship thing would come in handy. Bottom line. Yeah. Bottom yeah. line. Exactly. We're car doctors. Mm -hmm. We should do the same thing that doctors go through. You go to oh, school, yeah. then you go through an apprenticeship or a residency, and then you get to be a general practitioner, and then maybe you get to be a specialist, And right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, the funny thing is, most of my friends who work at, like, Ford or either Chevrolet, those guys aren't real car guys. They're doing it for the check. They started out with the whole idea, oh, I'm going to fix cars and all that. But when they go home, they're not going into their garage working on a well, ride. They're, they're burnt out. We're tired. Yeah. We're tired. Out, when I was at the dealership, oh man, I would, you know, I was doing, because you go flat rate, right? So I'm flagging 70, 80 hours a week in a 40 hour work week. By the time I get home, I am out of hustle. Mm -hmm. I am out of energy. I am out of strength. And it was like, do I want to work on a car on the weekend? Hell no. I've been doing that all day, busting my butt. Yep. Right? So you lose the love a little bit. You do. Yeah, so, you're right. There was a person I saw back there earlier, and I just want to answer real quick between E30 and E36 M3, hands down E30. I saw that. I was going to ask you that. I'm so I'm glad yeah, you noticed. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, I wouldn't pick either of them out of my garage. They could both, you know, eat crackers in my garage, so to speak. But um, but yeah, E30 M3 for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Although I would take an E36 and Techno Violet because that's an awesome color. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that car she knows. Now, what is <laughs> what is your personal everyday driver? Um, I drive a, a 2011, 2012. I don't remember. Um, BMW 335 CI. Ah, okay. Is that the one from from the show? Yeah. That you did on the show. Yeah, I still okay. have it. Yep. Yep. Cool. Finally paid it off. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's yours. Gotta like that. Right? They're better. They're better. They don't have a payment attached to them. Exactly. <laughs> right? Seriously. Uh, yeah. I, I have a custom 2000 Grand Dam, fully custom rust and everything. Nice. Comes, custom rust. Factory rotten body damage. Mm -hmm. That's comes <laughs> that, that, was, that was an extra option that they threw in. Right. Yeah, Seriously. The bad boys pay it off though. Yep. I got two motors. Yeah, hold... Do you? What kind of bikes do you have? Uh a 1990 Honda Hawk and a 2016 Triumph Street Triple. Look at you. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's impressive. Cool. And asking if my engine has the upgraded my BMW has the upgraded engine. Um well it has the 335. I don't know if that's upgraded. It's the engine that came in it, but I did um a, a larger intercooler and a, a performance exhaust and a chip on it and it's twin turbo, yes. There you go. And there you have it, twin turbo. Twin turbo. Twin. Yeah, Tori says that was it. That's a it. upgraded engine, a twin turbo. But it's what came in the 335. So like the 328 didn't have that. The 335 did. And Got with you. the two that I've done to it, it probably has the same horsepower as the M3 engine. So that's kind of cool for like, you know, $15,000, whatever, how much less it is than the M3, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. The 335D is awesome. Jared Zimmerman has from Carfax um, has the 335D, and that's also a seriously yeah. awesome car. That for is sure. a sleeper for days. Mm -hmm. I'm so much fun. That, that thing moves. I was oh, really yeah. surprised by that. 
It's yeah. cool. I'm amazed to describe cool. it more than this. That thing is awesome. Yeah, that thing is way cool. It's. <laughs> I, I was really impressed with that. Yeah. yeah. I, I and and honestly, you don't think it's a diesel. You no. I'm mean? like when it's sitting there idling, you don't you don't you don't think it's a diesel. But it has it a clatter. It's nice. No, they've got it, really. You don't think they got them quiet. Yeah, diesel technology has changed tremendously. Oh, it doesn't so have much. that kind of telltale yeah, sound. You don't, that 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 knock. you don't have that knock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. pull up to like a 1970s Mercedes diesel. Mm -hmm. and like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they're in high way, school. way different now. What? Yeah. No, yeah. No. You're talking trucks. Do you know the deal? No, it's not a truck. You're talking so diesel. Not, it's a BMW. If we're, oh, I heard it's diesel. a BMW I car. Heard oh. Oh. Go, <laughs> go away. Go away. Go away. That was amazing. Yeah, that, that's, 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 yeah, that's the future mechanics right there. Not. Right. <laughs> uh, hey, Dad. Faster. Dad, uh. I got flat. Hey, yeah, right. Exactly. That's already happened. Calls me up. He says they got a What's flat that? mother's car. So I go over there and you would think common sense would dictate you park under the street light. They park around the back of the of the damn gas station. Like, really? Moron. <laughs> Three teenage boys. One six seven three hundred pounds. The other one short and stubby than me. I'm not worried, but I'm gonna get robbed and something's <laughs> gonna happen. Yeah, it's because I'm Puerto Rican and white American. <laughs> <laughs> the, other, the other two guys are black, by the way. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know what that's like. <laughs> now, mind you. I teach my I teach my girls in my women's car care class to park under a light to get yourself off the freeway to get yourself <laughs> the place you can, and I also teach them how to break lug nuts loose using a cheater bar, which is basically a massive piece of steel pipe, right? And I tell them that that doubles as a weapon in case anybody oh, yeah. wants to mess with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> or it's about or, safety. <laughs> or you can just go with. <laughs> 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 I don't mess All right, with that. Well, it's coffee time, so I'm gonna roll because it is coffee time, and I'm jealous. All right. So, All right. Fair enough. You guys, you gonna stay on a little bit longer? You want to roll? What do you want to do? Talk to me. That's I mean, I don't care, well, but I know I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna roll get up too. Early but I'm gonna morning. put somebody else. Yeah, me too. I'm gonna put somebody else on the screen. I got. Uh, Two more minutes. So, Bogey, you can hang out with the fellas. You okay. Know, I'll hang I'll put some else up. I'll hang. Sorry, right, Lou. Um, we will talk to you when we talk to you. Dude. All right, Bogey. Good talking to you as always. So, I will see, see you next you, time. All right. See you, my dear. Later. 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 So, All man, right, how's it work, uh, Louis? You, when you go, does everyone else go? No. Oh, okay. I bounce out, but it'll be three of you on the screen. Ah, everybody, okay. everybody will still be in the chat room, though, so you guys okay. can hang out. All right. Jim, don't uh, run away. We're not going anywhere. We're staying. Can they still see? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Facebook yeah. and everything? Yeah. Oh, hello, Facebook. Oh, hi, Facebook. What's up? <laughs> Hold on. Let me see. Let me get yeah, right. 55 better. See, see, Jason, see this? Jason, are you still stuck on that? Come on. I, I want to hear why. Why is the 55 better? Yeah, yeah. Why? Why is 55 better? Yeah, yeah. They're going to ask. They're going to answer it, too. He says, actually, 66 is better. Make up your mind. <laughs> he, he's talking to <laughs> Ah, my man, Tori. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> Good to see you. What's up, well, hey, Tori? guys. How are you doing, buddy? It's just crazy, you know, <laughs> just running here, running there. Every kid needs to be driven somewhere. Everybody needs something, and I'm just... You know, well, you know what? Here's to you, buddy, because you know you're you're one hell of a guy. You, you watch know, it. Right, here we go. Lap, lap soda. <laughs> I, I ain't got nothing. You see, <laughs> see what I'm, you know what I'm dealing with here. <laughs> see, okay, there you go. Sixty-nine Camaro. Okay. That we can. There you go, Jim. Yeah. All right. Hey, Boogie, I'm gonna jump off, and I appreciate okay. you coming on Planet Traffic. As I see you. 
as a, a beautiful person as yourself. And we will talk sometime this week, next week, or at a show somewhere. All we'll right. see each other. And, uh, hey, fellas, thanks for uh, holding down the fort. Everybody in the chat room, appreciate you all coming on, playing the traffic. Tell all your friends. And, hey, there's a donate button down here that you can always hit and throw a couple of dollars to help us out. So, all right, peace. Good night, Lois. Yeah. Take care. I'll figure out, figure out how to cut myself off here. Wait a minute. <laughs> While he's cutting himself off here, Jason answered that 55 because it's the original try five and original is always better. I would like to contend, however, that you never buy a car the first year it comes out because they haven't worked out the kinks yet. Ah, <laughs> ah, you hear that? So she's saying 56. What say you? <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to respond to that because, <laughs> well, without, here's my take on it. Without the 55, there wouldn't be a 56 or 57. Yeah, there would. That's it was 54, remember? That doesn't mean it's better. It just means we're grateful for it. There you go. You know what though? Let's let's put it into all this. Technically, if there wasn't a fifty-five, then the fifty-six would be the original because they would have just introduced it in fifty-six instead of fifty-five. So really, your logic doesn't stand. How about this logic? I got logic for you. Okay. All right. Here okay. we go. I'm gonna build a big garage. I'm gonna keep piling it in. Nothing's gonna leave because they're all really cool anyway. They are really. Like, they really are. Yeah. <laughs> my neighbors might hate me, but you know, I think they do when I start to shrivel up all the time anyway. So what's the difference, I ask you? I don't know what that logic has to do with 55, 56, but you know what? We'll roll with it. Remember, I went to pre law school, so like this is <laughs> I just argue for the sake of arguing often. So my wife does too. You guys get along really good, actually. I'm telling you. This guy Jason, I, man, he's getting to me now. See, look at he says 56 is a redhead stepchild. What is that? I like red hair. <laughs> yeah. 57 is the king oh my goodness again I go back to is it broken can I fix it mm. and at the end of the day the beautiful thing about being builders and makers and doers of things is that you can make and build and do anything you want so if you have a 55 but you like the 56 convert it make the changes you need to make into a 56 yep. why not you know what Guys, the like a 70 like putting the 70 front end on a 71 Chevelle you know? <laughs> like putting a BMW engine in a 57 Chevy. Oh, blasphemy. Oh, no. That would be horrible. You got to put an LS in a BMW. No, blasphemy is the uh, the Hemi in the 55 that Mike Finnegan did. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, Bogey, yeah. I have a question for you, though. On All Girls yeah. Garage, you actually had a BMW that, that you looked at and purchased on, on the show. So what was the story with, with that BMW? Did the previous owner, or did you put a later model engine in there to make it a little bit better? Yeah, so it was a um, it was an engine upgrade that a, that a customer had already started or that somebody had already done, and then it was for sale. And so because, because he couldn't finish the project, he'd run out of time, he ran out of money, he ran out of whatever. At the end of the day, the really sad part is that, like, he'd done all the hard stuff, <laughs> and then there wasn't much <laughs> left. He was there. So, um, yeah, so it was, it was an upgrade to an S54 engine from the S52, if I'm remembering correctly. And it was basically went from single Vanos to dual Vanos, um, significantly more horsepower, um, just a, a way better and a very relatively um, um, like popular swap, I guess, to do. So, yeah, yeah, the gentleman from Rock Auto, I remember that on the show. He was able to help you out yeah. with some parts and stuff. Yeah. No, absolutely. They were. They're always good. Yeah, that was, I enjoyed that episode. I really don't know much about BMWs. I'm, you know, like Terry, I'm a Chevy guy, you know, GM guy. But do you still have that car, or what? You know, uh, what happened you know, to it? Um, um, I sold it. Okay. No, um, I never actually bought it. Magic baby. Um, I never actually owned that. Okay. <laughs> it was still cool though because. You know what? In the Chevy world, though, and Terry, you know this also. You know we're we're good for like taking you know a Tri Five Chevy, a Chevelle, a Camaro, an Impala. It doesn't matter. You know, you take the original, you know, small block or six cylinder out of it, and you're always putting something bigger, better, a big block, a, a really you know, warmed over small block stroker, an LS, LS, 
LS, you know what I'm saying? So um, and put, putting something more modern, something new, something better in an old classic body. Yeah. It's, it's nothing new anyway, so just yeah. making it cooler that way, you know? So Well, it's always interesting to me, like, where people get offended, right? Like, people have oh. no issues putting a Ford 9-inch in a Chevy, but you put a BMW engine in a Chevy, and they're like, oh, my God, sacrilege. You put an LS in a BMW, and people are cool with that, but put a BMW right. in a Chevy, and that's not okay. So, like, it's very interesting where people get their feathers ruffled about. And, again, I say... It's cool. We're builders, we're makers, we're doers of things. Why limit your imagination? There you go. Exactly. You know what I think it is? I think people are scared of the BMW engine because it's one, it's not American. That's that's one. And two, it's a little bit more, I should say, intricate than an LS. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of stuff that you got to know. I mean, like, you know, you could become an expert in an LS engine in a short amount of time, whereas a BMW, I mean, I guess if you're around it. And yeah. And isn't it a dual overhead cam? Isn't it, isn't it, it's, it's, you know, people are, are scared of the unfamiliar. So, yeah. you know. Well, Terry, you know what, though? You and I, we could talk all day long about LSs, about rectangular port heads and cathedral ports, and we could rattle off the 821, 823, and 5364 casting numbers, too. Oh, three, you know, five, four, right. Two. And, and seriously, right, we could talk about, you know, rectangular ports and the square ports on the – LS7 compared to the rectangular port on the LS3, L92, LS9. And to other people, we're just talking Greek, but I mean, yeah. I had a point yeah. to this, and we I just kind of... Talk like that. <laughs> and I'm going to throw out at you variable valve lift, variable cam timing, Vanos, eccentric shafts, and CAN bus diagnostics, and you're going to look at me like I'm loony zany. Well, you no, I got rid of the BVT. What? I got rid of my... After variable <laughs> valve time, and I was just like, you said, what loony... Nut rag. <laughs> variable valve lift. Okay, that I understand. Okay, I get that. Okay. One. Variable valve lift, like no more throttle. That's, like you don't need a throttle body anymore. See. That's the cool stuff. That's the cool. Wow. Thing. Now, <laughs> let me ask you, Bogey, are you more of an automatic or stick driver? There's two parts to that question, or two parts to that answer. Um, I am. I prefer manual transmission however my friends and family have overridden me and will not allow me to drive a manual transmission as my daily driver because i am very prone to multitasking and they figure one less thing for me to do while i'm multitasking is a good thing to keep bogey alive yeah okay <laughs> good point okay. you want to keep I, you around how did you uh, warwick say one less bell to answer <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was overridden. They're like, yeah, no, no, you're not allowed to have a stick shift anymore. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, we want to keep the lock too, so I have to I have to concur. Oh, yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. Because you are definitely, oh, you are definitely yeah. someone who is an inspiration to all. I said it before, and I'm never gonna get tired of saying it. You really are. You really are. Thank you. You know, Thank a true you. blessing. Really oh, for sure. And you're you're a favorite in this household too. Ask my family. So um <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Now the SEMA build, the SEMA build you're doing uh, that's going to be re released next year, 2020, right? What are you doing for rear differential uh, in there? Don't know yet. Put a BMW no rear in there. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. It's uh, I, I really I don't know a lot about this car. Um, I, I don't know that anybody knows a lot about. 1961 Volvo's PV 544. Like it's a weird car. It's not super common. So I don't really know what my options are going to be yet. It's going to be an adventure. It's going to be a learning process. We're going to figure it out as we go. Okay. Keep in touch with me on that because if you need a, a nine inch, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll donate the uh, fabricated nine inch housing. Oh, you're a sweetheart. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, Cause Lou and me, we're, we're going to be making them. So uh, we can definitely, Oh yeah, we could definitely uh, cool. hook you up in that respect. Okay. Jason says old Volvos are awesome. You you're familiar with them? That's impressive, right? In and of itself, um, they're goofy. Like the PV five forty four is a funky looking car. If you've ever seen it, we're gonna look it looks at this like, right now. <laughs> you got to Google it. It's like two different cars, and they cut them in half and put them together, like to, like the back end of one and the front end of another, or like two completely different vehicles. On the back, it's all like round, and it actually looks like a little Volkswagen bug. And on the front, it looks like somebody dropped a grand piano on it, 
And oh, it's like, I know this. I know this car. It's like round, flat. <laughs> what year? What year we are you building? Sixty-one. Sixty-one. Uh, okay, let's look at sixty-one. See if there's any difference. PV. No, the 61, 62, 63 there. I, from what I can see, they're all pretty. pretty oh, similar. I know this car. Okay, okay. Hold, hold your your phone up to the camera so that. Yeah, the, I'm gonna try to get a get a get a picture. Okay. You know what it almost looks like. I like. It. Well, I might insult some people, but it almost kind of looks like this. The car you're talking about. Let me see. Yes. Yeah, like a bug in the back like and somebody yeah. to the piano, right? Yeah. Yes. That's a cool car. You know what it kind of looks it's, like, Tori? You know what it kind of looks like? A Henry J. Yeah, yeah it you know. It almost looks like a Henry so, J in the back, like from the from the from the from the windshield back. Almost looks like a, it does look like a bug. Jesus Christ! <laughs> it really does. In the back, it does, sure. A lot of people compared it to like an old like like Ford like forties era Ford. Um, Henry J. <laughs> and then. It's interesting because it looks big, but it's actually a very small, it's more bug size, but it looks like it's a really big car. Um, and they used to rally them. Like yeah. if you Google um, rally PV544, you'll see some crazy footage of them like off-roading these things in like South Africa, like these crazy off-road yeah. courses, like jumping them. And it's, it's the weirdest thing to see those cars going hog wild off-road. So are you gonna build a are you gonna do a resto? Let me look something up. We are doing a resto. Um it's gonna be relatively custom. Um, because we need to do something with the proportions on that thing. Yeah. Um I'm not sure yet. I've got I'm actually working with Pinstripe Chris, if you guys are familiar with him, super, super talented guy. Um, he's coming up with two different renderings for um my customer to pick from. And we're kind of going. There's there's two different potential directions that we're gonna go in. We're not quite sure which way that's gonna be yet, but we'll see. Y'all have to stay tuned. Huh? Tori? He's no doubt. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, hold on. Yes, hold on. Oh. <laughs> the, gum, the gumball rally. No, no, the gumball rally. I think I saw uh -oh. the uh, the ball wasn't there. So He's having a wait. seizure now. It's it's, you know, sometimes people say things. All of a sudden, something just goes up ahead. I'm like, wait a minute. Where I saw that? Oh, no, you want to laugh. I'll tell you something funny. Do you like cartoons? <laughs> now he's having a seizure. The, the connection is messed up. Do you like cartoons? <laughs> I think. <laughs> no. Do you like uh, cartoons? Oh, my probably? goodness. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think we gotta let him know that he's will somebody. What will somebody I tell him that happened. he's I don't like know what happened, him so. that he's out. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's yeah, done. We gotta. We, I should save the screen. I know. What uh, happened? Are you back? <laughs> are you back with us, Dory? What happened? No. Oh, my God. oh yeah. There. Yep, there we go. I hope so. Jason, I, think I, I didn't know that I met you. But thank you for holding my beer in the picture. I appreciate so, it. That's awesome. <laughs> good. That's great. You know what happened? I when we uh, when you talk about the uh, the Volvos in, in the uh, the road race, I thought of the Gumball Rally. It was an old well, film. You did so freeze up. up. You there. were like having a seizure and, um, in the video. That, that's right. Uh -huh. I didn't mean freeze up or seize up or whatever. The video was like break dancing. <laughs> I, <laughs> it was amazing. Wow, no it was amazing. No, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Oh, really? Uh, oh, hope I was good. You know, but. Uh, yeah, I, I remember, you know, I, we had a fire in Queens, and uh, I was pulling ceilings, and I took down a good part of the ceiling with a piece of 2 by 12 hit me right in the helmet, and in the middle of the helmet, there's a piece of brass that comes up like a point or a pike and holds the four quadrants of the leather helmet together. So This is going to be a painful story. 2 by 12 hit me in the head. I don't remember anything. I wind up on the back step of the rig, and the captain comes and says, how are you feeling? Yeah. Oh, no. And then... I didn't know what happened though. They said I, I, I looked like Wiley Coyote when I got hit in the head with the uh, the two by twelve. I had no recollection of what happened and stuff. You, know? and, you did uh, freeze yeah. up. I think I think maybe it was just did the I two by four. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> <It's all free. laughs> so much, oh Greg. boy! Thank you so much. <laughs> Look at well, him. It was good. That's my buddy had a you know crap out. Sure, to go, uh, I think that might be a sign. It might is your AOL. <laughs> 500 hours lapsing. That's amazing, Jason. <laughs> it was, it was Netscape Navigator. <laughs> Tori. Well, don't mind me. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, these guys. You, know, you should have. Tori, you, you out there? No, I think we lost him. <laughs> I don't know Back what there. happened here. Glad you're not in this protection tonight. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> there he is. Well, now Tori sounds like he should be in witness protection. Mm. What's up? Tori. I don't know. I think we got, I think this is a sign, guys. Um, <laughs> we're way over an hour. That's yeah. probably part of the issue. <laughs> I, I know. He, <laughs> always like, oh, the one. You, you can't? Uh, Jason, it was very nice talking to you as well. Everybody was also yeah. talking to you. I'm trying to look at the comments and you guys. Tori, just give up. You're gone. Your connection's dead. We love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you hear him in the background? <laughs> so, <laughs> he's got a deep voice. Sounds all Barry Whitish. <laughs> he does sound very Barry Whitish. Oh, my goodness. All right, guys. Barry. Have a fantastic <laughs> night. Thank you so much for having me. Bogey, for everyone, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. And again, keep doing what you're doing because we need you. Thank you. I and, appreciate it. And and, and what I'm gonna Absolutely. do is I'm gonna I'm gonna what's it called? Uh, friend you and all that good stuff. <laughs> all that good stuff. I see all I right. see you on Instagram and all that. I'm gonna hit you off and everything like that because I want you to check out what I'm doing, and I definitely want you to see what I'm going to be doing. Awesome. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Sorry, can you hear me okay? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did he come back? All right, I'm, I'm leaving. Back. I don't know how to close this though. You're, You're back. back. Am I back? You're back and we're leaving. You're back. Like a... Okay. You're well, back I'm going like to say it. Cord. We've already said goodbye, Tori. Really? I'm gonna type it and say it, you know, just in case. So you got that, there. everybody. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, all right. Good night, y'all. <laughs> Have a Good fantastic night, everybody. evening. We'll give you the truth. All right, and I'll talk with you. Yeah. <laughs>